yeah, I'm completely against my sister on the left. First of all, uh, my sister says that um, Obama... Can you just tell the panel your name again? Um, just <laughs> Maybe you'll see other judges, I don't mind. I said before, she said Obama comes from ethnic minority Barack Hussein Obama. First of all, he has really a rather affluent and maternal grandparents educated at Yale and Harvard. So first of all, he's not um, a poor uh, person from a backwards community. He's educated, he's media savvy. That's why he was able to quote the Quran. If I can quote the Torah or the Psalms, the Bible, does that mean I respect Christianity or Judaism? I do, but that's not the point. That means I'm aware of it. I can quote it. There's a huge difference here. And then she said that he's quoted on the Fox News. Fox News remains one of the most biased. And I'm sure you see Fox News, one of the most biased um, news outlets in America. So if he's um, seen quoting the Quran on that, is that a good thing? I don't think so. She also said, the, uh, sorry, Guantanamo Bay is akin to Belmarsh. Guantanamo Bay, where um, supposedly terrorist individuals are um, in prison, and Belmarsh, a conventional prison, is incredibly silly comparison to make. That's why I think that there are several points within her opening um, saucy in this um, debate that Obama is actually not for a change um, in the Arab-American relationship. You look at Obama's speech in Cairo. Cairo. In Egypt, Egypt is one of the most corrupt, backwards, and sorry, I'm defending the Egyptians, one of the most corrupt, backwards state in the Middle East. And on top of that, has one of the most um, reprehensible humanitarian uh, records in the Middle East. Come off it, you're a joke. <laughs> <laughs> if you could substantiate that argument. I disagree. All he was doing was a favour to the Egyptians. If you look at the human rights record, look at Freedom House, it remains one of the most corrupt, quasi -illiberal, illiberal democracies in the region. That's like me giving a speech about human rights to Saudi Arabia. Does it make sense? No, simply because Egypt is an ally of America. That's the reason. Going back to uh, the debate before I was interrupted, Robert Malley, he was an unofficial advisor of the Obama presidential campaign. His father is Simon Malley, who founded Asia Afrique which was a um, think tank organization which campaigned for various issues, including Palestine. And Daniel Pipes, the, um, one of the controversial American <coughs> thinkers, he actually suggested that Simon Malley, father Robert Malley, unofficial advisor Barack Obama, was actually a PLO sympathizer. As soon as there was a small leak of the fact that um, Simon, Robert Malley had been contacted Hamas, Straight away, Barack Obama wasn't interested, he sacks him. They're distancing themselves from any organisation, any individual that seeks to try and implement peace in the region. On top of that, American intervention... You say is that, you say that, but uh, didn't uh, Obama's Cairo speech, didn't he say that the situation in Palestine is intolerable? So if you're kicking out any association with Palestine, why would he say something so blunt like that? Bill Clinton in the early 1990s started the Camp David Accord in the um, talks. What happened? Nothing happened. Bill Clinton, one of the most dynamic, charismatic uh, presidents of all the time, some suggested, according to the approval ratings, he wanted to bring about change. He wanted to uh, create two state solutions. <coughs> he wanted to bring about, finally, end this horrific um, conflict. Sorry, sorry, but just one thing. Uh, how would you, you know, if you're, you're so much against you know, Obama, how would you uh, explain the fact that he was the first American president to recognize Iran as uh, an Islamic uh, republic? I, um, I think it simply means to an end. In the 1980s, the American government was working with General Zia of Pakistan. And at that time, when he was the president for nearly 10 years, he implemented something akin to Sharia law. So saying that um, Obama <coughs> only recognized Islamic countries has put no uh, bearing on the policy of the United States of America. Yeah, but he's trying, you know, to, for example, he wants to facilitate things for Muslims. I think he's really trying hard to do something for Muslims. So maybe let's give him a chance before judging him without him having a chance. I disagree with what 
by saying that he allows the face of the card is the beginning of the process of peace in Palestine is absolutely yeah. ridiculous. I'm <laughs> um, going back to Israel not budging. Why has Rachel not changed in them for how long have I got? One minute. One minute, okay. To quickly summarise, there has been no change in the policies. Netanyahu reluctantly had to give a speech after some serious arm twist on the part of the Americans. Yes, there should be some kind of peace, maybe a state will emerge, but if you look at the content of the speech, there was nothing there, no substance. Has Obama really um, encouraged change? No, he hasn't. He has Zionist members in his government. Biden has gone on record to say he's a Zionist. You look at Abraham, um, um, he's um, head of um, political affairs, not Abraham something. Abraham, no, that's the one. <laughs> he's actually a committed Zionist. He's a leading Jewish um, thinker. Several members of the administration have close ties to uh, the Israel government. And Guantanamo has not been closed. Why has it not been closed? He promised he would close. And he knows that the Muslims, they feel, they feel strongly about this issue. It's a point of contention that happened for a long time because the majority of the prisoners there are Muslims. But he went back on his promises and this shows uh, these few days. So Thank you.